Hi, it's Craig here. Today I want to talk about kerosene heaters. I asked myself a question a few years ago when there was a power failure um, in southern Ontario and uh, in parts of New York. Um, and I forget where else, but it was a really huge power failure. Happened in 2003. And we had no power for about, some of us, with a, probably about 24 hours, we had no electricity. Now, luckily, it was in the middle of summer, and, you know, our big complaint was, you know, our food might spoil, and maybe we don't have our air conditioning uh, going, so we were all really hot. Um, but this time of year, I know a lot of us are, are really dealing with a hard winter this year, a lot of snow and very, very cold temperatures. It was minus 27 Celsius here yesterday, and I felt very comfortable knowing that if something was to happen to my furnace overnight, or if there was a power failure for any kind of reason, that I had this thing stored away, ready to go, filled with kerosene, and I had no worries as far as heat goes. It's my opinion that you should always be prepared for any kind of an emergency. We have smoke detectors in our homes, we have house insurance, we have car insurance, we have insurance all over the place, but what do you have in place in case something goes wrong with the electricity, your gas, your furnace? In this time of year, you really can't afford not to have a source of heat. It's freezing outside. The car doors were frozen yesterday. I had to pry them open. So, kerosene heaters are fantastic sources of heat. They're very, very efficient. Well, kerosene is a clear uh, fluid, okay? Um, it smells kind of like uh, paint thinner. Um, it's very safe, actually, uh, and it's very, very stable. In other words, this kerosene will last for years and years. Now, I know there are people that will tell you that you should change your kerosene every year uh, in your heater. Um, but I've he heard other people say that they've had the same kerosene in uh, their heater for 10 years and have never changed it and it still lights up. Now, one guy on YouTube, he had one of these things sit in the basement for 10 years and it had kerosene in it and he never touched it. 10 years later, he brought it out and he fired it up and it went right away, no problems, no worries. If you store it properly, now this is the container the kerosene came in, um, there are different regulations and uh, things in different countries uh, where, how you should store this, but in Canada this is how it comes, and um, it's, it's kerosene, it's K, one, K, uh, 1K kerosene, that's the grade, that's what you need to be using for these heaters. It's also called paraffin in some countries as well, okay? If stored properly out of the sunlight in a dark place, um, uh, they recommend ventilation, although I didn't use ventilation when I stored this. I can't smell anything coming out of the container. Gasoline, on the other hand, is highly flammable and it's not stable. It will go off after a few months even and it may not work. So the first thought I had was, well, maybe I'll buy a generator. And that way, if we lose power, I can power a 1500-watt um, baseboard heater. Well, the generator has to be outside for one thing to operate because it puts out carbon monoxide and the gasoline that powers the generator won't sit around for very long. So that was out of the question for me. That's why I chose uh, the kerosene solution for heat. Y you know, you always think, well, it'll never happen. But in 2003, it happened. And luckily, it wasn't winter time. Um, so anything can happen, and you know, the sun is actually going through a lot of activity right now, increasing uh, solar activity. That could affect our power grid. That could affect our infrastructure in the next few years. You really need to have some emergency measures in place. Now, this is not a very hard uh, thing to uh, operate. And I'm just going to show you the different parts. As you can see, it's kind of surrounded in a cage. This is a very common type of kerosene heater. There's different manufacturers that produce uh, the same design. Okay, it has a handle, so you can move it around if you need to, although it's fairly heavy. This is your, uh, I guess, your gas cap if you want. Uh, this is where you put your, uh, your kerosene, and it's chained on so you can't lose it. And uh, usually they come with, this one came with like a little siphoning, um, just get that back on there, a little siphoning uh, pump. 
that you put into the kerosene, you put into here, and you just squeeze a bulb and it pumps kerosene into the tank here. So there's no problem about spilling anything. This knob here adjusts your wick. Now inside the kerosene heater, there is a, a wick, and it's a cylindrical wick. The wick is shaped like a, a cylinder. It's made of a cloth material, and it dips down into the, into the gas chamber of the uh, unit, and it soaks up the kerosene until the kerosene completely s soaks into the wick, and then when you light the heater, the kerosene evaporates, and that's what causes the flame. And this is how you adjust the height of your wick. This is the emergency shutoff. This is how you turn the unit off. This is the uh, fuel indicator showing you how much fuel you've got left. And this is your igniting uh, switch. You can ignite these, you can ignite them with a match, but this one actually has a little battery pack at the back. You put two C batteries in there and this will actually light electronically. If the batteries happen to wear out, then you can light it manually with a match. Inside of here, you can see that there's a uh, little spring that you can lift up the burner. So the first thing you want to do is read all your instructions, put it all together properly, make sure it's all secured and properly assembled, and then you fill it up with your kerosene, and then you light it. And lighting it is extremely simple. So open your little hatch here so you can see what's going on. And you're going to turn up your wick all the way up to the top, as far as it'll go. Then you're going to press your igniter. The igniting pedal is going to lift the uh, burner up so that you're going to be able to see um, this thing when it's lit. You're going to be able to see when it's lit and you can let go of the pedal. So here we go. I'm going to give it a light. There's the igniter. And there it goes. As soon as it's all lit up, you can close down the lid. Move it back and forth a few times to make sure it's seated properly and close it up. Okay. Now, the first thing that's going to happen, and I'm going to grab my camera here so I can show you this. You see it's not quite fully lit yet. Okay. The flame is still coming up, approaching the top of that, that little dish there. Okay. Now, for the first 10 minutes, you need to keep an eye on this thing because the flame is going to change um, height it's going to get higher and higher and higher. You don't want it to burn too low and you don't want it to burn too high. Um, if it burns too low, you're going to create um, a black soot. And if it burns too high, you're going to create possibly carbon monoxide, and harmful gases, and it's going to smell. And again, you need to keep a carbon monoxide um, detector in your home just in case. And it's important that you adjust the wick accordingly. So as the flame gets bigger, you're going to want to adjust the knob to adjust the height of the wick. It's recommended uh, that the, the flame be about a half an inch above the top of the burner. Now, right now it's getting a little bit more than that, so I'm going to turn down my wick adjustment until the flame gets to be about a half an inch. There's uh, parts that are higher than others. In general, you just want to average it out and burn it so that on average it's about a half an inch uh, flame. And that's about what I've got there. Okay, so that's what the flame pretty much should look like. And the instructions will, uh, will show you exactly how to keep it at that height. During the course of the next 10 minutes, it's going to get higher and higher, and that means I'm going to have to use my wick control to adjust it lower and lower until it reaches a stable, um, a stable height. As the unit heats up, it's going to burn hotter and the flame is going to change, but that, that eventually will stable out and then you can leave it burn and it will heat your whole house. Last week when I brought this out to test it, I bring it out every year and test it and make sure it still all works and clean it out and things, I uh, turned off my home f heating system, my furnace, and I, I lit this thing up in the kitchen and it took the temperature from 72 Fahrenheit to 80 Fahrenheit in just half an hour. The whole main floor of the house 
the only thing about them is that you can't really adjust the temperature. Like you can't turn it up or turn it down. You have to burn it at the appropriate height um, to get the most efficiency out of it. I'm just going to check here. My flame's getting a little high. I'm just going to turn it down a bit. That's perfect. And that's exactly what it should look like. Okay. Um, so if it gets too warm in the house or in the room that you're burning this in, then you just turn it off. Okay. Um, and then later on you can turn it back on again. Um, when you shut them down, they do produce a little bit of a kerosene odor, but not too badly. While they're burning, they burn very, very cleanly. Very cleanly. There's absolutely no odor at all coming off this thing other than the fact that my shirt's getting hot and I can smells like I'm ironing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's real toasty warm here beside this thing. In fact, I'm going to have to move away from it because it's quite hot. Uh, you burn your face if you keep your face there. The heat coming off the top of this thing is enough to boil a pot of water. You could easily heat up a can of beans on here, boil water for tea, make broth, um, cook. I'm sure you could fry eggs on this thing if you put a pot on top of there. Easily cook on top of it. So if you did lose power, you could do more than just stay warm. You could actually, you know, cook yourself a simple meal as well. So it's a fantastic device. Like I said, there are different manufacturers. This is the most popular um, model um, under different manufacturers' names. A lot of people use this in their cottages or their RVs or their, you know, their, um, uh, when they go camping um, or in the home when you run out of power or something bad happens and you don't have any heat. This is a perfect thing to have around. So it's keeping me nice and warm right now. Okay, I just want to show you how I've got my flame set here. Okay, so it's settled out now and I really don't have to fool with this uh, very much anymore. But I just want to show you, um, I, <laughs> that's probably a little bit too low when, it, when it's like that. You need to have it half an inch. So about like that. You certainly don't want it like this. That's way too high and you're going to create fumes and carbon monoxide and all that kind of thing. So keep it down and uh, well that's how it should look just like that. Now it's been about 10 minutes and you can see that my flame has reached a nice comfortable level. I've been sort of tweaking it every once in a while, turning it down as it goes and now it's reached a point where it's no longer requiring adjustment. Um, it's going to burn like this for hours. Um, and you just need to check it every once in a while. You don't want to leave this thing unattended of course. But you just want to look in every once in a while just to make sure that it's burning the way it should. And if it's not, give it a little adjustment. Now, this will burn, I'm told, uh, according to the instructions, will burn for about 10 hours on one full tank of kerosene. This bottle contains enough kerosene to fill it about one and a half times. So this bottle of kerosene is going to give you about 15 hours of constant burning time. I highly recommend you guys look into this. If you, if you live in a cool or a cold climate where it gets really, really cold certain times of the year and there's a, a risk of you losing power or something happening to your household heating system, it really is comforting to know that you've got something in the home stored away somewhere that you can easily get out, light it up, and you've got an alternative source of heat. It goes true with food, water, first aid, candles, flashlights, batteries, a battery powered radio, all these kinds of things you should always have put away somewhere in case something happens and you need them. And I think this is one of the most important things other than food that you should have to make sure that you don't die of freezing to death. <laughs> so I guess the last thing I want to show you how to do is turn the thing off. And that's really easy. You just want to grab onto your wick adjustment like this and sort of hold on to it. And at the same time, you want to push down on your release valve and just slowly let it turn. It's spring-loaded. Slowly let it turn all the way down and it will extinguish itself. Um, it's actually still burning just a little bit in there, but it will extinguish itself within a couple of minutes. There will be some odor when it, when it goes out um, because you're, you're getting the vapor from the kerosene, but it's not that bad and um, it's certainly not going to harm anybody. So that's it for kerosene heaters. There's different types. There's big ones and small ones and, and uh, different types. But this particular type is, is popular. And in case you were wondering how to 
light this thing and, and maintain the, um, the wick and the flame. Hopefully this video gave you some information. If you have any questions, um, co comment down there. Um, and uh, I'll do my best to answer any questions you have. Thanks for watching. Hope this was help. See you guys soon. Take care.